Hello, welcome to Forest Learn. In this video, we're going to discuss the biggest mistakes that students make in uniform circular motion. Uniform circular motion means circular motion at a constant speed. If you think that mv squared over r is the centripetal force acting on an object performing circular motion, and or you think that the centripetal force is a type of force that acts on an object performing circular motion, you need to stop thinking this as soon as possible. These are major conceptual mistakes and unfortunately far too common. Let me explain. Imagine a small ball attached to a piece of string, which is at rest. Two forces act on the ball, its weight and tension in the string. And since the ball is at rest and therefore in equilibrium, the two forces must be equal and opposite to each other. Let's now imagine that the ball is set into uniform circular motion with radius r and at speed v. And this circular motion takes place in a vertical plane. So the ball moves in a circular path at constant speed. If we neglect air resistance, what individual forces act on the ball? Perhaps pause the video for a moment and have a think about this. Well, what do you think? The answer is the weight of the ball and tension. In other words, the only forces acting on the ball are the two forces that we identified when the ball was at rest. This isn't surprising. Just because the ball is now moving in a circular path, why would any new forces start acting on the ball? But what about the centripetal force? Here's what you need to understand about the centripetal force. The centripetal force is just the resultant force that acts on an object performing circular motion. Also, the centripetal force is not a type of force that happens to act on objects performing circular motion. If these statements seem unfamiliar to you, perhaps pause the video and take a bit of time to try to process them. In particular, you might be unsure as to what we mean by a type of force. Types of forces are things like gravity, tension, air resistance, and so on. Every force is a specific type of force. And what we're saying is that the centripetal force is not a type of force. If you're still unsure about what we mean by this, I recommend you check out the video we've created on the basics of forces to further clarify what's meant by a type of force after you watch this video. So if we go back to our example, the centripetal force, as we've said, is just the resultant force. And so in this example, it's just the resultant of the tension and the weight acting on the ball. Because the resultant force on an object moving at constant speed in a circle is always pointing towards the center of the circle, we just decide to call the resultant force the centripetal force. Centripetal means directed towards the center. So it's just another name for the resultant force. Now what about mv squared over r? Why isn't it the centripetal force? As is often the case in A-level physics, let's take Newton's second law as our starting point. F equals ma. Now F stands for resultant force, of course. ma, on the other hand, mass times acceleration, is not a force. While it's true to say that ma is mathematically equal to f, you shouldn't think of ma as representing a force. For example, in a free body force diagram, you would never draw ma as a force. That's completely wrong. In circular motion, the acceleration, the centripetal acceleration, is equal to the speed squared divided by the radius of the circle. And this means that we can replace a in f equals ma with v squared over r. But mv squared over r is still not a force, right? Because it's still just ma. What we interpret to be the force or the centripetal force is of course what's on the left hand side, which as we've explained is just the resultant force. In our example, the resultant force is just given by t minus w. So t minus w is the centripetal force. Now the ideas we've discussed in this video might be new to you and it might take a while for you to process them. So I recommend just taking your time and going through things carefully and slowly to really make sure you understand what's going on. It will be well worth your time because as I said these are really common mistakes in circular motion. In fact, let me also point out that formula sheets and booklets aren't very helpful as well. The way this is written in certain formula sheets and booklets is, I think, a bit unfortunate because it really suggests, it's quite suggestive that mv squared over r should be interpreted as the centripetal force. As we explained, that's not how you should think about it. If you found this video useful, please like it, share it, subscribe to the Forest Learn channel if you haven't already, and leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for listening. 
and I hope to see you soon.